We wanted to know how many such cases are there in Germany. We asked Lufthansa, but they declined to comment. Same with their competitors. And our civil aviation authority, the LBA, does not wish to answer this and other related questions at all. Only the Accident Investigation Branch, the BFU, is commenting. As with the LBA, serious incidents should be reported to this agency. But apparently, not all reports reach them. We show the investigator logbook entries from incidents which we obtained during our research from an informer. The BFU then has to admit I do have to conclude that we do not receive reports on all events. We have seen times where we obtained many reports and then there are times where this is not the case. I presume we are not getting all reports that exist. This is strange, as there is a legal requirement to forward such information to the authorities. Almost no reports have been filed by Lufthansa. But problems with contaminated air exist on the Airbus A340-600 fleet, as documents in our possession prove. A possible explanation for this deficit is known by attorney Fischer. Within Lufthansa there is the requirement for the pilots to report only to their Lufthansa superiors and not to the government agencies. Lufthansa as before declines to comment, but meanwhile their employees are becoming concerned. Internally, the airline admitted, Lufthansa told us that they assume one event every 2,000 takeoffs and landings. That would mean one event per day within their European operation alone. This is a grave concern to us and our passengers. As we were not given answers to the extent of this problem, we decided to secretly take swap samples from aircraft of well-known airlines. If we find TCP, this would be an indication that oil residue gets into the cabin air and that such events occur much more often than the airlines admit. Professor Van Etten has analyzed our samples in Canada. The results confirm our fears. For your particular pro project, we have done 31 wipe samples and 28 of those was, were highly positive for uh, tricrystal phosphates. The highest amount of TCP was found in a sample from this Boeing 757 belonging to Condor. 154.9 micrograms of TCP on a 2 by 2 centimeter surface. This is thousand times higher than the average of all other samples. We asked Condor for an interview, but this was cancelled on short notice. In a written statement Condor states that they take our findings very seriously, but they emphasize the existence of TCP on part of the cabin and cockpit equipment does not permit any conclusions about a possible concentration in the cabin air. This is correct, as it has not been researched. But how much TCP is allowable in the cabin? The expert says... There shouldn't be any in the, in the aircraft. The tricrystal phosphates are meant to be in the uh, engine and not in the aircraft itself. That certainly means that oil has been burned and that it enters the cabin and that people are inhaling this material. This is bad news for passengers, flight attendants and pilots, as no one can really protect themselves. And it can happen at any time. Although the Swedish incident of flight BU-437 was thoroughly investigated, the results were inadequate in the eyes of Captain Niels Gomer. And he cannot pilot any aircraft today due to medical reasons. But Goma, like many of his colleagues, also suffers from other effects. Nevertheless, he speaks out. I lost my license due to this and my job. So I think I can do some guesses because they can't take anything more from me. But I would say it's the money. So it's the industry. But it's also governments. They are very slow to respond because they have uh, lobbies performed towards them from different parts of the industries and the airlines. Until today no preventive measures have been taken by the aviation industry as they may fear a legal battle if they admit the problem. Regulators and politicians continue to turn a blind eye to the issue. But incidents occur worldwide as contaminated air enter into the aircraft cabin silently and undetected. Many 
people won't have any sense of smell, so we can't rely on the pilot's nose. There are no detection systems in aircraft, no matter what anyone says. And therefore, if you've got no detection systems and a pilot or pilots that have no sense of smell, the passengers down the back are in trouble. As long as airlines do not report events and are not obliged to inform their staff and passengers when contaminated air is suspected, the problem will remain unsolved. Most passengers will probably not connect their sudden strange symptoms like strong headaches or respiratory problems to the flight where, for some moments, there was this strange smell in the cabin. <laughs>